Hi, I'm Anna, Ableton Certified Trainer. Today, I'm here to show you how to use audio to MIDI conversion in Ableton Live 11. For that, I'll be using my own voice and already existing audio clips. This is a truly great technique if you, for example, ever like the melody of an audio loop, but you didn't really like the sound of it, or you weren't even really sure what notes are being played within that loop, or you might be a singer or just someone who loves to improvise with a microphone, different melodies, but you're not entirely sure how to turn that idea into MIDI information and actually input it into your DAW. If any of that ever applied to you, then keep watching. Let's start by adding some audio to work with. I've got this drum loop ready in the browser. I drop it onto an empty clip slot. We can see the waveform down here and let's have a little listen now. I really like the groove of these drums, but I prefer to have some different sounds to them, maybe take the hi-hats out, but it's pretty limited what I can do while it's audio. So I right click on a clip and choose convert drums to new MIDI track. And what happened live created a new MIDI track. And if we click on the clip, then we will see all the MIDI nodes that live have extracted as the result of the conversion. Live also inserted the 606 kit by default, but we will be able to change it later. Let's compare the result of the conversion to the original drum loop. So this is what life came up with. Switch. I'm actually really happy with the result of the conversion. And let's look at a few fun details. So if I select all the hi-hats now, we can see that Life extracted out all the different velocity changes of the element. If we zoom in, we can also see that some of the notes are a little bit off the grid, which means it's also extracted out the actual swing and the little pleasant incorrections of timing of the loop. Now, since it's MIDI now, I could add any notes to the sequence if I wanted to. We can get really creative here. But in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this clip quickly. And then I'm going to just mute out the hi-hats so I will have two different sequences. So I'm just going to hit zero on my keyboard and that will deactivate the notes. And now I have this. And the original. Okay, great, so let's move on. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the original drum loop as we don't need that anymore. And now it's time to change the drum rack. So we're gonna change what sounds these MIDI notes are triggering. I built this drum rack earlier with loads of layered sounds and of course some creative and corrective processing. So now it sounds like this. For the next conversion technique, I drag this piano loop into live and it sounds like this. I really love these chords, but I'm actually not entirely sure what every single chords are. Also, I love these chords to trigger a pad sound rather than a piano. So we're gonna right click on the clip again, and this time we're gonna choose convert harmony to new MIDI track. And we're gonna choose harmony conversion because we are dealing with chords, which means it's a polyphonic sound. So after the conversion happened, again, we got a brand new MIDI clip. And if we click on the clip, we see all the chords that live have extracted. So let's check them out. Now 
let's compare with the original loop. Let's go back. I think we can safely say that the conversion was successful. So now we are ready to dive in and start editing the notes to our taste. But first let's go and delete the original piano loop so it doesn't get forgotten in there. Now, the original loop was in B minor. It was in the file name as well. So what we can do, we can go to the clip view and enable scale. And we're gonna choose the root note of B and the scale minor. And what we see in the piano roll that there is this one note that is outside of the scale because it's not colored. So we're gonna delete that quickly. And then this other one as well. We could delete any of them, of course. So let's just get rid of this too. And now we're gonna go and make some further edits too. So I only want to keep the first four bar of these chords. So I'm just gonna trim this back. And I also want these four chords to play over eight bars. So I'm gonna hit the times two button here, which will drop the sequence to half time. So now that we were able to edit the four bars worth of chords to play over eight bars, just by a button click, let's check out the result. Super slow vibes. I also want to transpose these chords, so I'm going to select all the notes and then hit shift and up arrow, which transposes the notes by an entire octave. And let's change the sound as well to a pad that I've mentioned. So we're going to use this slow evolving sound. I think we can say that we came fairly far away from the original piano loop that we started with. So there we go. This time I'm going to start with recording. So I've got my interface here, I've got my microphone here and I'm going to be recording my voice and then I will turn that into MIDI. I put the metronome on and the monitoring and I think I'm ready, so let's go. This time we're gonna choose convert melody to new MIDI track because it's a monophonic sound. We're looking to extract single notes, one pitch at a time. Same thing happened, default instrument. Now let's check out the result. Pretty good, there is a wrong note, but that could have been just me. Now let's edit. So I'm going to select all the notes and then right click and choose the quantize settings to make sure that I'm quantizing 100%, then apply. Let's compare. Great, I find this pretty fun to be fair. Now let's move on and go and delete the original audio track and change the sound. So I'm gonna turn my little riff into a guitar sound, like this. Fun little sound. I've also got echo and arpeggiator in my rack. So let's enable the echo. Lush, the arpeggiator. Change the gate, which determines the length of the notes. Now in context. Now we're gonna use the same technique to attempt to create a bass sound. I already recorded myself.
that's my fabulous bass line idea. So let's do another melody conversion. I'm gonna solo the two tracks in the same time to see how they align. Amazing, the conversion done a pretty good job again. So I'm gonna go and delete the original audio track as we don't need it anymore. I'm also gonna go and just get rid of these notes which are not needed in the sequence. And I'm also gonna select all the notes and apply quantize. And I wanna get rid of all these little gaps between the notes, so I'm gonna hit legato. Now we are ready to change the instrument as well, so it becomes a bass line. To demonstrate the next conversion technique, I'm going to bring in some audio again. It's a vocal hook that I recorded earlier. So let's just add some volume and then have a little listen. Let's add some reverb by the sense. So we're going to slice this audio to MIDI. See, we got some warp markers here in the sample editor and I created them because that's where I want to have the slices. We can add more warp markers if we wanted to have more slices, but I'm pretty happy with what I had, so I'm gonna delete this. And now we can go ahead and right click on the clip and choose slice to new MIDI track. So I have this set to create a slice pair warp marker, therefore I created the warp markers in the audio. And now, if we click on the clip, we will see that there are the slices of the original sequence. So I can play it back and it'd be exactly how it was. But now, because it's MIDI, we can rearrange the slices if we wanted to. Perhaps it's nice to start organizing these slices and sequence them in a blank canvas. So I'm gonna just quickly delete this um, clip and create a new empty one. I'm gonna display more slices on the piano roll as well. If we double click on the track, we can see that we get access to each individual slice within a drum rack. I'm gonna go and create a pattern now. Here is the new sequence of the slices. I also transpose some of the slices. We can hit the control tab in the simpler to do that. For example, this slice. I also use the complex pro warp mode so I can play with the form and settings. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel for more. You can also find me here and see you next time.